And tonight, that we're going to be talking about uh, that everything has a purpose. Uh, you know, does anybody have fine china in their house? The parents have china, they inherited it from somebody. I hate china. Not the country, but I hate fine china. I just don't get the point. Don't tell Kathleen because she just inherited her like great grandmother's china. Uh, but I don't really get the point because it just sits in a cabinet and it doesn't really serve any kind of purpose. And that's weird to me because everything was created for, for a purpose. Uh, you have this glass of water right here. Uh, somebody came up with something to hold liquid in for people to drink out of, right? And people um, invented this stool right here so I could sit on it. Uh, and everything has a purpose that makes sense to me. Uh, and the thing is, it's not just everything has a purpose, but everyone has a purpose. And that's what we're going to be talking tonight about. Uh, and the question I want to ask is, everything that has, everything has a beginning. Everything started somewhere. Uh, everything has an end. It's going to somewhere. Um, and it exists for a reason. And when we talk about that, uh, it's not just everything, but it is everyone. Every single person sitting in this room has a purpose. And I bet you, to some extent, all of us have asked ourselves the question, what is my purpose? Or what am I going to, we talked about this a little bit um, last week, like what am I going to do in the future? What is, what is planned for me? Um, and what we have to do is we got to figure out the question, the answer to that question. Um, what is my purpose? Um, so cups have purpose, um, basketball has purpose, so they all have, it all started somewhere, right? Um, and this is what we have to think about tonight, which is what we're going to be talking about. In order to know what we were created for, our purpose, we have to know who we were created by. Um, we have to go to who we were created by. Um, if you have, say for instance, this chair. If I had never, ever, ever, ever seen a chair in my life, uh, who would I go to to find out? Who would know what the purpose of that chair was? Whatever carpenter invented the chair would be able to tell me what the purpose of a chair is. The purpose is to sit in it. Uh, the purpose of a glass of water, if I just saw this cup and I thought, oh, well, I'll put some dirt in it and put a flower and it'll stick out. Maybe I can put it on Instagram or put it on, what's that girly thing? Uh, Pinterest, excuse me. Um, sorry, guys, who have Pinterest. It's, it's not manly. Uh, sorry. Can't do anything about it. Uh, but, so everything has a beginning, everything has an end, everything has a purpose, what is yours? And that's the question um, we're going to be asking ourselves tonight. And it's something that I'm sure, like I said, we've all to an extent asked. Maybe some of you have found answers to it. Uh, maybe you have, like, like, big life goals. Like, this is what I want to accomplish in life. This is what I want um, for my future. Um, and I want to take you to, to a man, uh, his name was David. Who's heard of David in the Bible? Some people, does anybody just want to yell out something that David did? Kill the giant. What's that? Kill the giant. He killed a giant. I thought he said a dragon. That would be cool too. Um, he killed uh, Goliath. We actually heard that last week in the reading, the first reading. Um, and after after David killed Goliath, they came home. And if you remember this from last week, David wasn't the king at that time. Saul was the king. And uh, he, they were walking down the streets and all the women were like shouting out, singing songs about how Saul, the king, killed thousands. And David killed tens of thousands. And so like even outdid the king in that. So people were pretty impressed, especially the ladies. Uh, for killing somebody with a slingshot. Anybody else know what David did? Anything? A lot of the Psalms. Very good. So, who likes J.K. Rowling or Veronica Roth or any of those authors that write things? Awesome. Cool. Reading is good. Keep doing it. Um, I've actually gotten really lazy lately and just started listening to audiobooks. Does anybody listen to audiobooks? It's the coolest nerd thing ever to do. You don't even have to read words. It's great. They read them for you. Um, 
They won't get you to college though. Uh, so those are two really popular authors right now. Um, I think J.K. Rowling wrote these books called Harry Potter. I haven't read them yet, but here they're good. Uh, but think of David, he wrote the Psalms. Somebody wrote something 4,000 years ago that people are reading today. Uh, anybody else know something that David did? He was the blank of Israel. Yeah, very good. All of y'all. Very smart. So he was the king of Israel. And not only was he the king of Israel, but he was like, Israel, I mean, if you think about what happened with Israel, Adam and Eve, they fell, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Moses came, brought them out of Egypt. Uh, then um, stuff started happening. They went to the promised land. Uh, more stuff happened. Uh, this is very paraphrased. And all of a sudden, they start building this kingdom. And David was like the king of the kings. Like He was like, brought Israel to the heights. Um, of their kingdom. His son Solomon kind of piggybacked on to David and, and like people would come from hundreds and hundreds of miles away just to hear uh, David's son Solomon speak his wisdom. And so not only was he just a king, but he had everything. David had absolutely everything. Um, so he was Goliath. Uh, oh, I already got there. So he did all these things, uh, but he wasn't satisfied. You might say, like, okay, David, he had, uh, he was a king. He had a wife, actually, more than one, but we won't talk about that. Um, he had uh, money. He had wealth. He had power. He had fame. He was a, um, a good author. If you read the Psalms, they're pretty awesome. Uh, but he wasn't just satisfied in that. He didn't feel like he knew his purpose. And so he went and he thought about this. He said, in order to know what I'm created for, I have to go to, to, go to the one I was created by. And so, so David, he actually sought out... Um, he sought out what God thought his purpose was in life. So King David, he did all these things. He was best friends with the king's son, King Saul, Jonathan. He's an awesome name. Uh, killed Goliath. He was the ancestor of Jesus, greatest king of Israel, anointed by God, all these great things. But he had to go to God to figure out what his purpose was. And if you go to one of the Psalms, Psalm 63, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful Psalm. I encourage you to go to it and read it. It's a, oh, hello, God. Uh, it says, Oh God, you are my God. For you I long. For you my soul thirsts. I'm just going to get rid of this. So it says, Oh God, you are my God. For you I long. For you my soul thirsts. Uh, like a land parched, lifeless, and without water. So I'll wait for you in the sanctuary. So I'll look to you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your love is better than life. This is coming out of the mouth of someone who had everything, that had it all figured out. I mean, once you become king, if you had goals when you were little, like I'm going to be president of the United States, or I'm going to be a nurse or a doctor, whatever it might be, like once you get to the point of being a king, you, you probably feel like you know what your goal, your purpose is. But David wasn't satisfied with just that. He saw something greater. Um, like Father Tom was talking about, who's at mass at 6 p.m. mass today? Awesome, a lot of us. Good. Put a mess. Um, Father Tom was talking about how um, Jesus called the apostles from something ordinary to something extraordinary. And the same is for us. Like, God, I mean, you can say, like, that was pretty extraordinary, David being king. David killing a giant that was, like, five feet taller than him with a slingshot, a rock. Like, I mean... Like, how do you do that? I mean, he didn't have guns, he didn't have knife. He did all these, like, great things that people, like, praised him for, but he just, he wasn't happy. He knew there was something even more that God had in plan with him. And to do that, he went and he um, asked God what his purpose was. And the psalm is, the psalms, like, like Tessa saying, David wrote the psalms, um, a lot of them. And the psalms aren't just, just like, nice little writings. These are, like, David's most intimate prayers. Like, when he was, was trying to seek the Lord, seek his purpose, this is what came out. For you, my soul longs, my body, I thirst for you, Lord. And so I look to you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory, for your love is better than life. 
Now what I want to ask um, what this has to do uh, tonight we're talking about um, our vocation. Everybody has a same vocation and that's to holiness. I mean David was known as a pretty holy guy and so when you think about he, he, he asked that question what is my purpose? I'm going to seek the one who created me to figure out what I was created for. He went to God and this is what comes from it. Not, I want you to be even more powerful king, or I want you to do this and that. Like he called him to different things to lead the kingdom of Israel. But the majority of what he spent his time on, there's 150 psalms. Like that's a lot of work. That's a lot of time. But that's not just a lot of time just writing stuff. That's a lot of time praying, asking the Lord, what is my purpose? For your love is better than life. And so we find in the story of David, he found his purpose, not in a lot of the goals that he might have had, um, not in being holy in the sense that we have to like, make ourselves perfect. Like, holiness is not about, uh, okay, I gotta follow the rules, I gotta do all these things, uh, I can't mess up. If I mess up, then I'm not holy. Uh, that's just not true. Holiness is, is not about self made perfection. It's holiness is about finding our purpose. And if you look at David, if you look at what he did, it wasn't um, the actions he did. He brought God's chosen people into a huge kingdom that was, that was like legendary for, wait for it, Derry. Um, anybody? Yeah, that was a poor delivery on my part, I'm sorry. Um, but he created it for a purpose uh, that after David died, literally for 2,000 years, his people, the people of Israel were like, oh my gosh, we can't wait for another king like David. Hence, Jesus comes into the picture. Things are even awesomer. But that wasn't, that wasn't David's prime purpose. David's prime purpose was to be in union with Jesus Christ. In relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, I want you to say that in relationship with Jesus Christ. Ready? In relationship with Jesus Christ. That is what holiness is. Holiness is not, um, like I said, not just about figuring out how to be perfect, how to not mess up, how to not make mistakes. Because I can guarantee you, including myself right here, that every single person in this room has struggled with somebody, something. Somebody, everybody in this room has sinned. Everybody in this room has fallen short of the glory of God. I mean, you have St. Paul who said those words, who before Christ converted his heart, killed Christians for a living. He sought them out and he put them to death. So if you think about that, St. Paul, Saint, as we recognize that he's in heaven, why would we say that he's holy? Not because of his actions, because he was in a relationship with Jesus Christ and that is what holiness is. And that is what our purpose is. And here's the thing about um, our purpose, too. It's really awesome. So you see you have this chair. This is a chair for, like, sitting down, having coffee in the live teen room, all this other stuff. It serves the purpose of sitting, right? Yes. Awesome. This chair over here also serves as a purpose of sitting. But I would probably do more stuff in this chair, like watch football, relax, read a book, something like that. See, what's awesome about our purpose as humans is first of all to recognize that yes, we're all called to holiness. That's a vocation. Just like all chairs are called to sit in, which is way less exciting than us. Uh, all people are called to holiness. But what's cool about what we're talking about this semester is that it's not just uh, everybody has this uniform thing that we have where we're robots and we get to follow what God uh, preordained for us. And that's it. We're all the same. Uh, but just like these two chairs, there is the same uh, fundamental purpose of sitting. But I would do that in different ways in this chair as I would in this one. The same goes for us in our vocation. We all have a vocation of holiness, a vocation to know and grow closer to Jesus Christ who created us. But that's played out in many different ways. A lot of people in this room are going to be called to the vocation of marriage. People in this room are going to be called to the vocation of the priesthood, to holy orders, to the diaconate. 
There could be a bishop in this room, which would be super sweet. Invite me to your ordination. I would love to come. Uh, a lot of people, some people in this room might be called to be uh, religious sisters or religious brothers. Some maybe um, will consecrate their lives um, as a single person in living in the world uh, to Jesus and to, to the preaching his gospel. See, nothing changes. We're all called to holiness. We're all called to relationship with Christ, just like these chairs are called to sitting, but they're lived out in different ways. And so we find what that purpose is in knowing Jesus Christ. And so what does that mean for you? The awesome thing about us and the not so awesome thing about this chair is this chair doesn't decide whose nasty sweaty butt comes and sits in it. Like, the chair can't, I can't walk up to the chair and like, hey chair, you mind if I sit? He can't be like, no, you're gross, you're tall, you haven't showered in three days, which is true, that's not true. Uh, this chair can't choose what its purpose is. Yes, the creator, the creator chose uh, of a chair, uh, decided what its purpose would be. End of story. The same is true for us that uh, God created us with a purpose to know and love and grow closer to him. But we're not like a chair who doesn't have a choice. God gave us freedom. And so what you have decided to do is not only um, know your purpose, you have, you have to accept it. You have to say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. You can't just name your purpose. You also have to claim your purpose. Jesus isn't somebody, God isn't somebody who forces anything on us. But at the same time, he knows what each of us need more than we do. Because he created you. And he's sitting right next to you, not up in the sky like, oh look, there's Billy, and there's Susie. Like, he's right next to you right now, cheering you on, cheering you on and saying, choose me. Choose me. Pick me. Follow me. Not out of selfishness, not because he's so awesome, which he is, but because he knows what your purpose is, and that's to be close to him. And he's cheering you on because he knows that nothing else is going to make you happy. That's why you had King David, who had everything in the world, yet still had to seek the Lord. And that's where he found his happiness and his fulfillment. And so that's the decision that some of you have to make, that all of us have to make, excuse me. You can't just name your purpose, but you also have to claim it. And the reality is, um, your purpose is that you are a child of God. That you were baptized in Christ, that you died to sin, and you have new life in Him. And what that means for your life is that whether you like it or not, the way you were made is to be close to the Lord. And I can bet you, if you've never tried to be close to the Lord, that if you do, I bet you it won't be easy, but I bet you you'll be a lot happier, a lot more joy-filled. Not that you won't go through less struggles, less trials, less whatever, but you will have found your purpose. And so I want to close with just, with just that last point. Holiness, when we're talking this semester, all of us are called to holiness, whatever vocation it might be. Um, but it's not made through perfection of like just figuring out and not messing up. It's about growing close to Jesus. I want to close with this quote by um, John Paul II. He says, It is Jesus that you seek when you dream of happiness. He is waiting for you when nothing else you find satisfies you. He is the beauty to which you are so attracted. It is he who provokes you with that thirst for fullness that will not let you settle for a compromise. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are our purpose, you are our beginning, you are our end. Help us to recognize that purpose and claim that purpose. Lord, we sit at your feet, coming to the one we were created by, to learn specifically for me, for each person, what we were created for. Help us be holy, help us to be more like you. Amen. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.